Heidi ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today along with my son. Nathaniel. Yeah. Hey guys, today we're going to be unboxing our Power King stub grinder that we ordered from Home Depot. So stay tuned, guys, as we get her done. First of all, we'll take a pair of side cutters and cut the uh, banding strips there. And now the next thing we'll do, can you grab it? Can you pull it off of there, Thaddeo? I don't think it's gonna come off of there. <laughs> no, come off. <laughs> hey guys, I think we're gonna get us a little hammer here and we're gonna pick these little metal tabs up. So stay tuned, we'll get that done. Okay, folks, I'm using just a little pry bar here to bend these little tabs up. And then uh, once I get it bent up like that, I take like the needle, needle nose and just kind of bend it on. And if I need to hammer on a little bit, just get all the tabs straight up like that. And then we should be able to pull this lid off here in just a minute. Okay, now let's see if I can just get a hold of this thing and pull the whole lid off. Maybe we can at least see what's inside the box. I'm gonna come over here one time. Oh, there we go. How about that off there, Nathaniel? Oh boy, we got a lot of parts in here now. Let's see if we can pull a few off and just take a look. Okay. All right, guys. Let's see here, Nathaniel. Whew, boy, this looks like this is going to be a uh, a feat of engineering for us to get this together, don't we, Nathaniel? What do you think, buddy? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So that's all the parts. We're going to pull them out and lay them out. Okay, guys. We started. Um, pulling things out of the box. I just want to show you as we're pulling out. So we pulled out the tires, okay? I noticed one of them has a brake on it, okay? I think you're gonna be able to actually brake one to where you can rotate the unit back and forth to do your cutting motion. Uh, right here, we laid out a couple things. This looks like a little chip guard, you know, to keep chips from flying back on you. Not sure what this is yet. This might be a battery cover. Um, not sure what's in the bag here. But uh, let's take a look. Oh, this is a cover. This is a cover, I think, for the whole unit. And in this little bag, uh, not sure that what this is for yet. Uh, really not sure yet. But anyway, we'll figure it out. We got some gloves here, some goggles, some ear protection, and not sure what that is. I guess I'll open that up here in a little bit. But um, we're just trying to pull everything out of the main box right now and get all the pieces out of here. Oh, this heavy thing. Oh, I think that's the battery. That's probably what, I guarantee you that's what that is. That's the battery, I'm sure. That's what that look. Yep, that's a little small uh, battery. And we just have a lot to unbox here, guys. So we're gonna keep pulling it out of the box and then we'll find the instructions and show you how to put this thing together. Stay tuned. Okay, here's a set of teeth. I think this unit actually comes with an extra set of teeth. I don't know if that's the extra set. Bring the camera back over here a minute. This is a uh, tow bar that come with it as well. And uh, I don't think it says off-road only. So you're only supposed to pull this like with your lawnmower and stuff. I don't think you're supposed to go down the highway with this thing. I know I wouldn't want to anyway. But anyhow, um, we're still getting it out of the box. I think we're gonna pull the back of the crate off and actually slide it out of here. So we're continuing on. Okay. Are you filming? Okay, this looks like the, uh, the main controller here that you hang on to while you're operating this unit. Looks like it's got a safety shut off switch here and a cable that runs to something. And then we'll figure that out here in a little bit. It looks like a major component. Get this little piece out of here. Okay. Lay it out here on the side. Okay, folks, the uh, instruction manual is actually inside the green bag that we unzipped earlier. And it looks like it has a uh, Owner's, owner's manual and operation guide also has a whole book here. And I think this is about the Kohler engine. And um, so we'll take a look at that. We'll definitely keep that on file in case we ever need, have any questions about the engine of any kind. 
Yeah, I come with a few tools here, okay? So a couple, uh, couple wrenches here if you don't already have some. A 13 and a 10, a 13 and a 17, and a 13 and a 10 again, and a 19 and a 22. It's just some cheap little wrenches to help put the unit together. So we're going to go in here and look through this a minute, and then we'll come back out and keep going. Okay, guys. Hey, we're back here on day two of putting together the uh, stump grinder project. Um, I went ahead and got started on it um, and put the rear tires in place. And it's handy to have a uh, four jack here just to grab the bottom by. And this thing don't want to teeter just right, but actually the centering point seems to be right here just underneath this axle right here. So keep that in mind if you decide to jack it up. Your right rear tire is got like a triangular shaped hub here. Okay, now your left rear has the brake on it, so it has a little brake drum. And this little silver piece here is your brake uh, brake shoes and backing plate assembly that just slides on the axle. And these notches here, it locks onto this uh, gusset that's welded onto the axle to hold it in place. And you can see right here, this is where we'll attach the cable here in a little bit. But go ahead and put that in place and then put your nuts on and you'll see the nuts are just a seven eighths headed uh, um, nut with a nylon locking and a cotter pin at the end just to ensure that it doesn't back off. So guys, that's, all, that's where we're at right now. We're gonna keep trucking along. Okay, folks, here's the, like, the upright piece that, um, or the first part of the upright piece. Notice it has a flat flange here, angle, and it's got four holes to be bolted right here, where these four holes here are. See where this is and thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and right here, all these nuts and bolts here, we're gonna use these. And I'm gonna go ahead and put Loctite on all this stuff too. I, I figure this stump grinder is probably subject to a lot of vibrations so anything that i'm putting on this thing i'm gonna put blue loctite on okay so i'm gonna hold this thing up here try to get these bolts started i'm gonna put one flat washer on and try to bring them all up through here and get the nut started and then we'll dab some loctite on and zip them all down so i may not film actually doing this because it's probably going to take me and nathaniel to hold it in place so if you got a partner helping you do this it'll probably be a lot easier Okay, with all four of those installed, we're gonna go ahead and use our air ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket and a double box in 13, 15 wrench. We'll use the 13 side to hold it and we'll go ahead and uh, put our air ratchet up here, snug these down. Okay. okay, now we're gonna install this handle here, guys, and it looks like you're gonna install it with the Power King brand facing up. Because on this side, you can see you got your fast and slow, that's your throttle, which is down here. We'll actually be bolting that up to here as well. Um, here's our brake and our cable. Uh, looks like there's an adjustment here. There's an adjustment on that end too. And we'll get that fine tuned here in a little bit. But to start with, I guess we're gonna pull this uh, bolt, this long bolt out of here and there's a lock washer and nut on here. And we're gonna just gonna go ahead and pull this out and then install this piece here and put it back together. Okay, we're gonna put this in place, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hold this above here. And I was noticing that all the play, you know, it's like got a super amount of play, but this bolt goes in here first, like so. And see how it, it notches inside right here to hold it in place when you're turning. And on this side, actually what I was wanting to do is I got some grease here. And before I put the nut on here, I want to put some grease on these threads because this is going to be something that's going to be probably loosened, you know, quite a bit here and there. So just to kind of keep, make the thread life last a little longer, we'll put a little bit of lubricant on there, okay? So let's do that right quick. And we'll go ahead and get our washer and lock washer and handle here. We'll put them in place right like, like so. And we'll put this handle on here and start tightening this up. Now we'll hold this up to a, what we think might be a pretty normal operating level here. And as you see, when you tighten this up, 
these notches fit into these notches and that's what holds the handle in place okay and you can loosen it and back it off a couple turns you can move it down like this right here if you wanted to you know if you're more comfortable operating down at this level right here you know that more power to you so there we go guys we're gonna start hooking up some cables now okay folks hey right here we have this cable and uh, an actual wiring connector here we got to connect i think this is for the safety kill switch so we're going to go ahead and make the connection right here and the connector just goes one way okay just like so and then down here at the bottom because this you got a section of cable that ran through this piece here and you see the end of the pigtail right here and here's another wire coming across here from the engine. Let's show them where it's connected over here in the thing right over here, buddy. It's connected like to the ignition stuff. And it's, um, so we're gonna run this kind of underneath the engine here and make this connection. Now, I don't really like the way this thing is hanging down here. I got a feeling it's gonna get messed up. And it's too short to come above this in any fashion. So I think what I'm going to end up doing, I'm not going to do it right this minute, but after I get everything in and get the battery in, I'm going to probably tuck this wire the best I can and zip tie it to something, either to this handle or maybe to something back here, because I definitely don't want it hanging down low like that. I got a feeling that the chips would probably end up hitting it, messing it up or something or I'd end up catching it on something and it'd rip it out. So we'll definitely deal with that uh, here later on. Next thing we're gonna hook up is our throttle control. And judging by the picture, looks like the nut side actually faces out this way. And I think it's the only way it would go anyway. We're gonna bring the cable down below this. We're gonna back these bolts out, run them through here, and then snug them down. So just stay tuned for that. Okay, folks, the next thing we're gonna do is hook up our parking brake here, okay? Here's what the end of the cable looks like. We're gonna have to hook this into the lever down here. And then we have these two adjustment nuts here. That's gonna bring the camera around here and thing. Hopefully they can see. This is gonna fit inside here somehow or another. And then we're gonna have the locking nut on each side. But the first thing I'm gonna do is reach in here and try to hook the cable into the little lever. This might be a little tricky with the tire on. Well, maybe not too bad. There we go. So we're in. So this, uh, this, the cable's locked into the bracket, okay? Now we gotta see if we'll, it will allow us to hook, hook it in here. It doesn't look like it will. So actually I gotta bring it back out and then we'll, we'll hook it in. We'll run it through here first and then hook it into the cable. Okay guys, what I ended up having to do is actually take the cable out of this little adjuster here so I'd take a pair of pliers and actually turn it because it's got a slit all the way down the side. Let me show you a good paper here. Thing. See how there's a slit all the way down through here? I had to turn it where I could get the cable out of there for a minute. I need to get that out so I can get it hooked up down here. So go ahead and hold that, son. <clears throat> all right. So with that unhooked, and what I've done down here on this end is uh, back one nut off of this sleeve here now i got so i can move this this far now so that's what i need to get it hooked up so i want to be able to move that cable really far i got the nut here so let me put hook the cable back up and then i can pull this to get it put into the mount hang on i'll show you what i'm talking about in just a minute let me get this hooked up all right so we're back into the lever okay now we, we, we let the nut just kind of hang free and we pull this to here and move the cable in there. Now we got the adjuster sleeve hooked into the, the main part of the mount. Okay, so now, we, now everything's hooked up, okay? And I can go ahead and put the nut back on here and start it and run it up somewhat close to where we need it. But before we go too far, I want to get this hooked back up up here. So swing the camera back around. And we want to get this back inside here. Hang on, we'll make sure we can still do that. I'm gonna to have to actually manually hold the lever a little bit to allow myself to do that. 
I want to get this back up inside here. There we go. So guys, we're good to go now, okay? Hold on, let's show what we're talking about. So we're back. Back the camera off right until we're red here. Yeah, we're right here. So we're back in here. I'm gonna take the pliers. I'm gonna turn this a little bit again to where it can't pop out of there. And then we're gonna do our adjusting down here until we get this brake operating correctly. Okay, folks, this is pretty simple to adjust, okay? First of all, down here at the brake drum, okay? What I wanted to do was actually take my hand and hit the lever. I want a little bit of play down here because we don't want any drag on the wheel, okay? So we should be able to spin the wheel freely when we're rolling it around, okay? And then when we're ready, now I gotta lock these locking nuts here with the wrench in, in a minute. But up here at the lever, when you flip this back, your wheel should not move, okay? That little bit of movement that you're seeing there is just the 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 notch on the um, uh, axle working into the backing plate, okay? But it's not going to move anymore until you release it, and then it'll free wheel once again, okay? Now, up here, I want to show you, bring the camera right up here, Nathaniel. Um, you do have an adjustment just by simply turning this knob in or out. If you tighten it in, it actually makes it where you have, to, where it actually holds the brake a little harder, okay? And uh, what I would recommend is probably getting the brake just to hold good enough, okay, to where it holds the thing so you don't overstretch your cable, okay? Because this is, a, I mean, you could really crank on this right here and you could put some torque on it it's probably unnecessary and basically all you're going to be doing is stretching your cable out okay so just pay close attention to that but do know you do have an adjustment if you go clockwise you're going to make it you're going to bring the adjustment up tighter counterclockwise is going to release it a little bit okay so that's that pretty simple setup okay folks uh i'm here on uh, the third day of putting this thing together it's early in the morning i actually got out here last night and finished wrapping this thing up i didn't film as i was doing uh, i figured i'd just wrap it up by telling you what i what i have done the battery is installed uh <clears throat> hooking up a battery is pretty simple there's a red wire goes to the positive there's a black wire that goes to the negative side but i will say this i was a little disappointed in the way this battery is held down by this black cover the cover doesn't fit very well it actually binds up against the um, the little fender here you know to protect the blade from protects you from the blade and i had to do a little bit of grinding uh, on the plastic cover to get it to actually even fit in there and lock down and even with the battery in place slid down on here i had to kind of like tap it with my hand to get it to go that way and get these bolts started to hold it in place so it's secure now but it's just very aggravating they could have done a little bit better job in the design of that to um, make that a little easier to deal with so we've done that uh, the unit comes shipped with no oil and we looked in the manual it took 1.16 quarts of oil so we went ahead and added that right over here. There's two points you can add. You can add down here where my middle finger is pointed, but that's a little bit aggravating. So we went over here and added on this side, right here, and that was the easiest point. So we added the oil and, and then we test fired it and it did crank right up. We put a little bit of gas in it. And right over here, you have your, uh, let's see here fuel shut off we're gonna go ahead and cut it on we'll get getting ready to do some stump grinding here in a little bit and this is our choke we'll go ahead and cut it on and we'll hit the starter button here I'll go ahead and do it for you now so we we'll go ahead and hit the starter button Thank you. 
and cut it off right now, wrap up this video. Um, I thank you for stopping by and checking out our how to um, put this thing together video. I will say this, like I said, I was a little disappointed in the battery cover. One more thing that we did install is this extra little uh, guard that goes behind the whole thing. It's just, uh, it goes across the whole back so we get a better look at it. As you can see, it's just a black cover that goes around down there. Now, it was a little bit long and I knew it was gonna drag the ground. So I trimmed about a half inch off of here with my shears, okay? So that was a little bit long. That was the only thing I really noticed that was, uh, didn't fit real well other than the battery. And uh, so guys, we're gonna get cranking up and make another video here on, uh, make our first video on how to use this Power King stump grinder. We've got an old stump out here. It's about rotted out, so it should chew right through it pretty easy. That'll be our first video. And uh, so far, I'm very happy with it. Uh, the instructions for assembly uh, could be a little bit better, you know, that come with this thing. Uh, a lot of it was just kind of figuring things out, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty mechanically inclined, so wasn't a big deal. But uh, I will go back. Oh, I want to tell you one other thing we are going to do before we get grinding. There are grease fittings on these bearings right here. There's a little cover here. I'm going to pull it off. I got to go find my grease gun. So we got a fitting here on this bearing. Got one over here. It's going to be a little hard to get to. I wish they had to turn this whole bearing around and it made it a lot easier to get to this side. If I ever have to take that apart, I'll probably end up turning that around if I can. So we're going to grease these things up every time we use it to pump any dirt that could get in the bearing. Just go ahead and pump it on out and hopefully uh, keep it operating as long as possible. Guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video today. Stay tuned for more videos on stump grinding. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.